Bill Wilson's story is one you never forget. Abandoned by his alcoholic mother who left him on a street corner when he was 12 years old, he sat there for three days. Through the kindness of a stranger and the love of Christ, he would find healing and belonging. In 1980, he founded Metro Ministries in Brooklyn, New York. It now has the largest Sunday school in the world and a very big bus ministry, a ministry that planted excitement in the heart of Marlene Nevis. You were just six, Marlene, yes. when you obviously knew about this bus that took children to Sunday school. Yes, yes. It all started uh, when every time after school I would come out and see flyers uh, announcing that there would be Yogi Bear Saturday, and I was always excited about it. But my mom always told me I couldn't go because the streets were dangerous, and she didn't trust me to go by myself. And it only took one day for my mom's friend to convince her that her daughter will watch over me for, to go. And from there it went on. How did you feel getting on that bus for the first time <laughs> with all these kids that you, I'm sure, didn't know? Yeah, I didn't. I only knew my friend, so it was just my friend and me. And I was excited but nervous at the same time because it's the first time I ever went out without my mom and just a friend. And I just sat there in the bus and we were riding, singing along, just singing songs all the way till we got to the church. And I remember that first day when I got there. It was loaded. The auditorium had was like 500 kids, 600 kids, and I was just excited. We were singing songs. People were just welcoming us in, and I was just happy. I, I felt safe. I felt that for a moment I can forget about what went on at home and just could focus on just enjoying my childhood. Was the bus driver there and back? Yes. Uh a pretty significant uh, person in this story? Yes, Pastor Bill was actually driving <laughs> He the was bus. the driver. Yes, though. he was the driver. And the funny part was that the day I got on the bus, he was welcoming all the kids. But the moment we were getting back, um, I started noticing all the kids were leaving slowly and slowly. And I was just like, OK, when am I going to get off this bus? When am, when am I going home? I know I'm in my area. And I noticed that at the end, I was the last kid on the bus. And one of the staff members working with Pastor Bill came up to me and was like, sweetie, where's your stop? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, it's my first time. And um, I didn't want to talk to her at all. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to talk to you. And then Pastor Bill just pulled over our bus, and he went to the back. And uh, he spoke to me, and he was just like, sweetie, if you want to get home, you need to tell me where you live. You need to tell me where's your home. And I just remember, I was like, I live in. And then I just told him my address, and I just started crying. I was like, I want my mom. <laughs> and he was like, okay, I promise I'm going to get you there. And that moment when he said, I promise I'm going to get you there, I felt he's going to get me there. I didn't know this guy, but I knew he was going to get me there. And he just brought me up to the front with him and sat me right next to him on his bus. And he just mm -hmm. drove and left me right in front of my house while my parents were waiting for me nervous because they saw the other kids. And yeah. Promises weren't kept at yeah. your home. Yeah, they weren't. What was home like? Um, I was raised in a home where my parents are together, but you can pretty much feel that they aren't. Um, I grew up in a home where my brother does drugs. He was involved in a gang that's right around the corner from where they used to pick up the kids and what we still do. Um, I can say there was never a day without fighting. Um, I remember a lot of times walking out the door tired, um, suicidal thoughts. And my brain thinking, why is this for me? Why do I have to live in this house? But um, what kept me going on the weeks was Sunday school, yeah. was knowing that Saturday morning I would get up and just go on the bus and just forget about everything, forget about the problems that my parents were having, the fights, and just be where people loved me, where I heard Christ and I heard how he loved me. and how his promises were kept for me, and he had something greater than the one I saw every day. Mm. And that's what made me so safe, and, and I wanted to be there every Saturday. I thought if I wasn't there Saturday, it was kind of like a sin, mm -hmm. <laughs> not going. <laughs> now you're a part of this huge blessing for so many children. Yeah. Um, we've got some B-roll yeah. of uh, what happens yeah. when the kids actually <laughs> get to Metro Ministries. Yeah, we have songs. There's Bill. Yeah, we have songs. They go on, and the kids are jumping and shouting. We're on the bleachers. And then 
after we singing songs, um, they give us our lesson and the lessons, the staff members prepare the night before for it. And it's always those lessons that when you go out, you know God spoke to your heart, you know. I remember not, every time I left, I left crying because I know that whatever was mentioned on that stage by Pastor Bill, by the staff members, that that word was for me. I felt every true. time they use the stories because we they use life stories. So they give examples of what we go home. They they tell us the Bible verses, but they bring it up and use what goes around in our neighborhood, what goes around to just m for us to get more of an idea. And I knew every time when I left, I was like, that was for me. So they really contextualize Jesus. Yes. How does he apply where we're really living? Yes. And what we're living with. Has home changed for you? You've changed. Yeah. Uh, your family. Yeah. Um, must see. Marlene's a new girl. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm still the only Christian at home. It's a struggle daily. I still see what I saw growing up. Um, at times it's hard for my parents to grasp that. They always think she's always at church. What's the big deal at church? Um, but I'm believing and knowing that God will have, has a plan. I know that God has a plan for my household and that me and my family will be saved and we'll just minister one day and I'm just holding on to that hope and that truth because I know he promises me it. You are on a very exciting path. You will graduate in one year this month. Yes. <laughs> December 2012. Yes. <laughs> with? An a major in education. I plan to teach um, in elementary schools back in the city where I grew up. Um, Specifically well, early childhood yes. education. Yes. Which is so yeah. wonderful. <laughs> I'm excited. I just my whole goal is to do the same thing that I do in Sunday school. Um, since I started working in Sunday school, I always made it my goal to show the kids love, to show them how we have, we're there for them. And I just feel that like with the teacher position, they look up to you because they spend most of their days with you with, compared to their parents. So just being able to shine that light that Christ mm -hmm. is giving me to shine.